two potential tropical cyclones and a lot of stormy weather in Australia's top end. A lot to get through in this forecast update for January 9th. So we have quite a bit of weather to get through, that's for sure. January 9th, 2024, your latest forecast update brought to you by Force 13 Australia. Um, there's two potential tropical cyclones, one off Western Australia and one that's going to wrap itself up in the Gulf of Carpentaria. And there's also a third that the Bureau of Meteorology has just uh, marked in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Those, uh, the first two that I mentioned are threats to land, however, the latter one is not a threat to land. So we've got a lot to get through, so stick around for the full 19 minutes and I'm going to break down these systems bit by bit and tell you what areas will be impacted. So now for the national picture for the next day uh, or so, hot conditions in Australia's west and then stormy conditions across Australia's north. There's nothing uh, too far out of the ordinary. Uh, thankfully, there's no severe storms expected over the next uh, 24 hours. Maybe one or two storms might go severe uh, across Queensland, but they're not going to be affecting any major population centres. So thankfully, the run of severe weather that we've had in Australia's east and southeast is well and truly over, and it doesn't look like it's going to spark back up again for at least the next 10 days or so but there's definitely rumbles of storms uh, going on in the tr uh, tropical north as you'd expect with this monsoon trough that is peaking earlier than initially expected. So now let's take a look at our cyclone forecast graphic. Uh, the third tropical cyclone in the middle of the Indian Ocean is not available on this graphic because I ran out of space but we do have two areas that we're going to be monitoring. The one in the Gulf of Carpentaria and Coral Sea is a 10% chance of formation in the next 10 days and then the one in the Bonaparte Gulf off the coast of Darwin is a 40% chance of development in the next 10 days. Now, these chances are a little bit misleading. We're expecting these chances to be bumped up significantly when we start to see these thunderstorms fire over where the low pressure systems are expected to develop. So I'd realistically be giving a fairly high chance of these cyclones both developing in the next 14 days. So now taking a look at rainfall for the Australian picture for the next 10 days. There's nothing too much out of the ordinary when you're out of the tropics. Just a couple of thunderstorms blowing up next weekend across New South Wales and Victoria with the passage of a cold front. But it's those cyclones up in the tropical north that we're really watching. You can see them really start to develop this weekend and into early next week, Monday and Tuesday. We really see that Western Australian one develop up quite nicely up to Category 1 status. And then the one in the Gulf of Carpentaria has a lot of fuel to get very strong. And the Access G3 model, the Bureau of Meteorology's own forecast model, calls for a very strong system out of this. And the only other two parts that I'd like to make note here on the rainfall forecast is the first rains of summer for southwest and Western Australia, and also a significant amount of rainfall for southeast Queensland. Land, but I'll break that down in greater depth later on in the video, so stay around until then. Now, take a look at the GFS, uh, the Axis G3 temperature run, rather. Um, the only interesting thing here is uh, how hot the weather is expected to be across Western and South Australia. Apart from that, nothing out of the ordinary. In fact, one or two cold spots in Tasmania and Victoria where we might be seeing sub-zero nights next week and into early next week. But it is hot, hot and hot across Western Australia. Perth expecting some scorches this weekend, up to 40 degrees in places. Uh, so stay cool uh, if you do live in Perth. And you'd also notice as this cyclone makes passage uh, parallel to the West Australian coastline, conditions really do cool down. Um, around that system, which is relief to the extreme heat that they've been receiving for the past month up there. So that's good news on that part. Take a look at the ECMWF winds. This is our tropical sector. Uh, you can see uh, the cyclone on about Saturday, Sunday, wrapping itself up, becoming a cyclone on Saturday evening, um, as maybe a Category 1 or even Category 2 as it peaks, uh, passing through Truscott and Columbaroo. It's a strong system by Sunday afternoon and into Monday morning, uh, up to Category 2, maybe even Category 3 status as it parallels the coast there and it will be strengthening right up towards landfall and maybe even overland as well. Broome receiving cyclone conditions on Monday as that second system wraps itself up in the Gulf of Carpentaria. And then this cyclone parallels the coast for the next uh, few days into the next weeks, very gradually weakening, but because of the brown ocean effect, which I'll explain at about the eight minute mark in the video, um, the cyclone will be struggling to lose intensity um, and then zooming right in about Tuesday and Wednesday on that cyclone up in the Gulf of Carpentaria. It becomes really strong. Category 4 status about Tuesday evening and Category 4 status Wednesday morning as it makes landfall in the Northern Territory. So a lot to get through with those cyclones and they are significant storm threats, that's for sure. Um, but, and you can already see on the satellite imagery there's a couple of thunderstorms firing up around the Northern Territory around Darwin right now and these are the precursor thunderstorms to those tropical cyclones that we'll be expecting to form this weekend and into early next week. Still a while away, but this is when we're expecting this thunderstorm activity to spark up. 
So nationally, this is what we're dealing with right now. There's isolated thunderstorms across New South Wales and Queensland, but they're really not the main picture that we're looking at, at least today and into tomorrow. The big story right now is, of course, in the tropics with those two and maybe even three tropical cyclones, which I'm going to break down for you in great detail and tell you exactly what impacts are on the way and where to expect said impacts. But you can already see a lot more thunderstorm activity in the Timor Sea, just offshore from Darwin, associated with this monsoon trough that is now starting starting to peak. And you can already see thunderstorm activity firing um, north of the Northern Territory and into the Gulf of Carpentaria. And it's really hard to say if this is gonna be associated with that tropical low that we're expecting to form up here. But I can say for certain that these thunderstorms here are associated with the cyclone that is expected to form offshore from Western Australia and the Northern Territory. And if we flip over to the wind forecast right now, you can already see those westerly winds starting to pick up offshore from Indonesia and Timor, moving into the Gulf of Carpentaria. And there's already a very broad low pressure system starting to develop here over the northern reaches of the Northern Territory. And that's going to intensify and deepen later on into tonight. Um and you can just see just uh, these westerly winds, they really don't let up around 20 knots or so. So it could even uh, be a little bit blustery on the northern coasts of the Northern Territory. But you can really start to see this tropical low starting to spin itself up a little bit on Thursday and into Friday. And this is when the forecast is gonna become a lot more certain for us. And we'll be able to really hone in on what impacts are expected uh, in the path of this tropical cyclone. But it's still not until about Saturday or Sunday that we really start to see these westerly winds pick up and these tropical lows start to develop. The first tropical low develops basically over the top of Catherine before moving um, offshore into the uh, Bonaparte Gulf. And I believe this is when we should flick over to the access model because uh, the access model has been pretty good with initializing the, these cyclones. And it's also been pretty good in keeping track of what the uh, process of these cyclones is going to be. And it's been a very consistent model as well. Because it's the Bureau of Meteorology's model, I'm going to use it exclusively for this forecast. However, what I will note is that there's not great model consensus right now, which means that most other forecast models are a little bit uncertain on what this system's going to do. So there's still a lot out in the forecast uh, to decide on and to really um, tell you what um, actually will happen with these cyclones. Um, Basically, what I'm trying to say is we don't know exactly what's going to happen yet, but we will get a greater understanding of the picture Friday and Saturday and into Sunday. So make sure you're staying tuned to the channel by subscribing and leave a like on the video while you're at it. Um, but yeah, quite a lot going on here, uh, quite a lot to break down actually with these two cyclones being so close together. You can see it's basically just one big broad monsoon low until about Saturday when this cyclone actually forms. And if this cyclone is to form, it'll pick up the name of Kiralee. Um, and then over in uh, the Gulf of Carpentaria, you can start to see the tropical low starting to spin up on Sunday. I'm going to jump back to that in a little bit, but I'm going to give you the forecast for this tropical low here, Saturday and into Sunday. Keeping track of time in the bottom half of your screen, you can see it basically parallels the WA coastline in the Kimberley region from Columba right down to about Derby and Broome. And it becomes, yeah, a pretty substantial tropical cyclone. You can see winds approaching that 64 knot threshold for Category 3 status. So it, it, it's almost a severe tropical cyclone as it landfalls directly on Derby. Now, this is this has actually been a pretty consistent um, story from the Axis model. It's either calling for the cyclone to move uh, pretty far inland, about 100 kilometers away from the coast, or it's calling for it to really skim the coastline here. So I'm not expecting the cyclone to move out over the Indian Ocean. If it did do that, we would be looking at a Category 5 or beyond that, it would be an incredibly strong cyclone. The conditions are really good for it. So the only thing keeping the cyclone relatively weak is the fact that it's going to have a lot of land interaction and maybe even wind shear to deal with because of its land interaction um, as we get into Monday and into Tuesday. And it's still a cyclone as it passes Broome. Now, what I will, would like to note is because of this cyclone's slow motion, rainfall totals are going to be through the roof. And because this um, area has been pretty untapped for the most part in terms of pulse thunderstorms so far this year, there's a lot of potential energy for thunderstorms to really fire up around this cyclone. And you can see it reciprocates that in the forecast models. So much rainfall is expected to come, especially on the western side of this cyclone. I mean, I'm looking at one hour totals here approaching that 100 millimeter mark. So ridiculous rainfall totals are expected. The access model generally isn't the best in terms of rainfall, but it was absolutely spot on for Cyclone Jasper. So I'm inclined to almost trust this model here, considering how accurate it has been so far this cyclone season. It nailed Jasper. That's all I have to say on that part. Um, but you can see rainfall totals widespread above a thousand millimeters, a meter of rain 
or 40 inches in a lot of places along the WA coastline. And as it moves inland, there's places that will be picking up in excess of 500 millimeters. And this is desert places as well. So this is two years worth of rainfall coming from this tropical cyclone, which isn't absolutely unprecedented, but it will cause significant flooding uh, in the mining communities in central Western Australia. So there is actually quite a lot of concern regarding this forecast from this tropical cyclone, because if this is to reciprocate, then we're staring down the barrel of a lot of rainfall expected from this cyclone. And as uh, you just saw, basically, as I'm playing through the forecast models, there's a lot of uncertainty with where this cyclone is going to track. The Euro model is expecting this cyclone to move over the Central Northern Territory and past Catherine and stuff, and basically absolutely no rainfall is expected across Western Australia. And in fact, the GFS model just calls it to stall in the Bonaparte Gulf, and it just hangs around there for about 10 days before it dies off. So there's a really big scope of possibilities in regards to this uh, tropical cyclone and where it's going to be moving and so forth. Now, I would like to explain why the cyclone is expected to hold intensity because most of you know that if a cyclone or a tropical low is moving over land, it's very unlikely and very weird for it to hold its intensity or in fact even strengthen. The reason why it strengthens is because of the brown ocean effect. Now, that's when the tropical cyclone dumps so much rainfall that it creates inland seas and it's able to, as a result of those inland seas, fire up new thunderstorms which result in the cyclone strengthening. We've seen it before and it happens almost every year actually with storms that may or tropical lows that make passage between Kununurra and Broome and that's what drove the Broome floods of I believe it was early 2022 uh, to be so insanely intense and that's why Broome got like a thousand millimeters of rain in three days because of the brown ocean effect just thunderstorms firing over the flooding rain so it's, think of it as a feedback loop actually the more rain that falls the stronger the thunderstorms can be and the more strengthening the tropical low can have. I will briefly just take a look at this cyclone over here over the Cocos Islands before I jump over to that really strong cyclone in the nation's north. And you can see, yeah, it looks like a tropical low really tries to spin itself up. It's actually a designated invest right now, which means the official agencies are watching it closely. You can search it up online at invest96s on a website, say tropical tidbits or weathernerds.org. Um, because it is expected to become a very brief tropical cyclone in the central central Indian Ocean, but you can see it just hovers and it really doesn't become a threat to land. But it does look like it becomes something on about Thursday in about 10 days' time. It becomes a brief tropical cyclone before it interacts with a whopper system over by Mauritius, but that's way out of our area of coverage, so I'm going to give that a bit of a miss there. But you can see the cyclone over in the Northern Territory really, really strong, up beyond Category 3, maybe even Category 4 status if we find 80 knots winds and yeah almost 70 or 80 knot winds that might just be because of the model's resolution making landfall um, on the northeastern quadrant of the northern territory here in Kakadu so a very remote section of the Australian continent however still a very strong cyclone so um, damaging destructive winds expected as a result of this cyclone making passage and we've seen it before on this forecast uh, the accesses forecast it has called for a really strong cyclone for quite a while in the Gulf of Carpentaria and we're really starting to see it reciprocate on the forecast models in the next 10 days. And the reason why the other forecast models aren't showing a strong cyclone up here is because of the interaction with the other tropical cyclone that we're expecting, which will become tropical cyclone Kiralee, um offshore from Western Australia. It actually moves over the Northern Territory in the other model forecasts, but you can see still the GFS calling for something to wrap itself up in around the 10 day forecast period, but it really doesn't become anything um, in that time frame. So there's a really confusing scenario and I don't blame you if you're a little bit confused as a viewer because there's a lot to break down here in terms of the forecast. But if I'm to really simplify it, we're expecting a cyclone offshore from northwestern Western Australia or the Northern Territory. And there's also the possibility of a cyclone to develop in the Gulf of Carpentaria. Maybe a 30% chance of this occurring, but the one over uh, offshore from Western Australia and the Northern Territory, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that that's probably going to form at this time. It's very likely that it will will develop at some point in the next 10 days. So we'll be watching this situation very closely. And if you are brand new to the channel, please do consider subscribing because we're inching closer to 10,000 subscribers with every single day. And I'd love to have your support on board as well. Now, we'll also break down the uh, rest of the nation's weather because there's still quite a lot to uh, look at. I'm gonna just briefly jump over to the rainfall accumulation and I'll just give you a little bit of a breakdown here. A lot of rainfall expected in northeastern New South Wales, up to 200 millimeters in some places, which is is back down quite a lot from the initial forecast of like 400 millimeters that we we're looking at. So that's a bit of good news there. But that's associated with a bunch of rain that's expected to blow in from the South Pacific Ocean. 
um, from a low pressure system that will probably cross the coast around Brisbane. Not a cyclone, but it is expected to dump quite a substantial amount of rainfall um, onshore at around Coffs Harbour, that sort of area. Sydney should miss out on the rainfall though. And also a substantial amount of rainfall expected around the Perth area. Finally, maybe about 50 millimetres in around 10 days time. We'll be watching this closely, but that for that to occur, we'd have to have this tropical cyclone um, in around the uh, northwestern part of Western Australia. That's the only way that this rainfall is driven. But there is the possibilities that the rainfall is finally here for Perth and the inland re uh, communities in the Wheatbelt and the Goldfields region. So we're watching this one closely because I'm very excited for some rain down in Perth. Actually, what I will bring up is just the tremendous amount of rainfall that I've missed up here uh, from the tropical cyclone in the Gulf of Carpentaria. Nearly two metres in one or two spots, which means, yeah, um, really huge rainfall rates expected around the centre of the system as it moves through on its final approach for landfall um, in around sort of that 10 day time, because it will be a slow moving system. Watch that, geez, up to 100 millimeters in an hour. That's some ridiculous rainfall total. So that would cause some serious flooding if it is to get itself overland. Yeah, up to 104 millimeters of rain in the three hour, in the one hour period in some places in the northern extremities of the Northern Territory. So a lot of rainfall there to be worried about, that's for sure. So. Um, yeah, it's getting quite busy in the tropics, that's for sure, as this monsoon trough peaks in around a week's time. And we will be likely seeing two, maybe even three tropical cyclones as a result of this. And for an El Nino year, that's relatively unusual. Normally, the bulk of the cyclone activity happens in La Nina years. So... Uh, we've had a really unusual El Nino, and that's probably because the El Nino period is actually starting to die off uh, a lot earlier than expected in the uh, tropical Pacific Ocean, which is good news, I guess, uh, considering it's going to curb that uh, summer of bushfires that we were expecting probably around March and April, but it's probably only going to drive more rainfall in the forms of these monsoon bursts in northern Australia and also in eastern Australia. So it's not exactly uh, good news that it's dying off yet, but Again, we'll have to watch the forecast and see because it's it's Australia at the end of the day. It's a really hard place to make good, solid forecasts in. But on that note, I'm going to leave it here. If you please, if you did enjoy the video, please do consider subscribing. It really does help us out monetarily. And if you'd like to show you even further support, please do leave a like on the video as well. And tell me what you thought of this forecast in the comment section down below. But that's all from me, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye. Thank you for watching our content this update. If you enjoyed it, be sure to subscribe to get more updates covering all things weather and geophysics impacting Australia and the Oceania region. Subscribe to our other channels for more content from across the network and be sure to check out our website where you can find free access to floater and radar imagery and articles on everything weather and much more. If you wish to support us directly, you can purchase some of our merchandise. We have a wide variety of clothing and homeware. Or you could become an ultimate fan, which is the best way to directly support us, granting you some sweet perks and offers, including features in our custom storm animations, live streams, and much more.